What up, Dope Pistons fans? Welcome back to another episode, man. Um, this is going to be a shorter video. There's only a few things I'm going to hit on in this video with regard to this game. Um, there are a lot of things that you can talk about, but there's only a few things that I'm going to talk about tonight. By the way, I'm still fighting the cold from last night. I uh, still got this bug, you know, so I'm going to do my best to get this out to y'all. Not feeling the greatest, but I'm here in this game. Uh, has me feeling a little bit worse. So y'all bear with me. But the Pistons tonight, they lose to the Milwaukee Bucks in overtime for the second straight night to fall to five and eight on the season. I'm not doing individual stats tonight. I may talk about one or two guys, but this game is bigger than that tonight. This game was about more than box scores. This game was more about who was available, who was not available, even though we could have used some of the guys that were out tonight. So we'll get to that. The Pistons had absolutely no business losing this game tonight. They were the better team. They were the better team. They may not have had the best player on the court, but they had the best team for sure. Damian Lillard didn't play tonight. He was out. So even though we did have guys missing, we really just had to stop one guy in order for us to win this game. In the first half, the Pistons were doing everything right. They were playing sound basketball. They were moving the ball well. They were playing great team defense. They were playing together, making everything tough for Giannis. Which brings me to one of the first things I want to talk about tonight. Now, last night, I talked about Isaiah Stewart at length about how important he was to this team. If there was any doubt after last night, there should be none at this point as to how important Isaiah Stewart is to this team. I always talk about how he sets the tone. He sets the tone. And this is tonight is what I mean. If you watch tonight's game, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean when I say he sets the tone. Because the whole energy of this game shifted. Dude just was locked in from jump. He wanted to set a tone in, in the first quarter, in the first play of the game, when it came to Giannis, to let him know it was going to be a tough night. It was not going to be anything easy. And though Giannis did it, put up a 50 ball, which is insane, he had 90% of the Bucks' first quarter points. But Isaiah Stewart guards Giannis Antetokounmpo as well as anybody in the league. Anybody in the league. He didn't start this game. Jalen Durant started this game, and he got in foul trouble. I think Giannis' speed was a little bit too much for him early, and so he had to sit with about eight minutes left in the first quarter. Stu came in the game and set the tone immediately. Immediately. He comes into the game and immediately gets a putback dunk. And on the way down the floor, as Giannis is dribbling the ball, Stu was, Stu was, clapping, Stu was clapping like this, telling him to bring it, and then stripped him on that play. He kept Giannis on the perimeter where you want him. Stu has the strength and the foot speed to be able to keep up with him. There are multiple times when Giannis was trying to drive on him and Stu would literally stand him up. It was a play where Giannis tried to bully his way to the basket in the post. And each time he would dip his shoulder. And it's funny because a lot of guys in that situation would try to draw a charge. But Stu welcomes that physicality. That's what he means when he says he loves physical play. That's what he loves. So every time Giannis would try to drop his shoulder to get close to the basket, Stu would bump him and stand him straight up. Giannis try again, Stu right there, not giving up any ground whatsoever. And Giannis isn't used to that. He's not used to that. And these two have history. We've, these two have gone at it in previous years. So this was nothing new. But Stu came out ready to play. He made him take perimeter shots. Every time Giannis would get the ball on the perimeter, was Stu guarding him? He would look for that irritating little midi that he has now. Every time it went in, it would just get on my nerves. But anyway, Stu kept him on the perimeter. After that one possession, when he tried to muscle his way to the basket and Stu said no, Giannis was on the perimeter for the rest of the first half when Stu was guarding him. And whenever he knocked down a midi, Stu would just go like this. Okay, whatever. You can have that. You can have it. So I know I say it all the time, but Isaiah Stewart's value, man, his presence is invaluable. It even got to the point where the Bucks started running pick and roll with Giannis and Brooke Lopez just to get Stu off of Giannis. And every time Giannis would have the mismatch, he would look to go to work. So he definitely was bothered by Isaiah Stewart tonight. And in the first half, the Pistons just played really good basketball. They fed off of Isaiah Stewart's impact. They fed off of his physicality, just his grit. They fed off of that. You saw it. They were up 18 points in the first half. They were well on their way to another win. And then the second half happened. Midway through the third quarter, Giannis tries to post up Stu. And he gives him a chicken wing, an elbow, in order to create space, which should have been an offensive foul. 
That was an offensive foul. I think that ticked off Stu. And when Giannis tried to go to the basket for a dunk, because he has Stu out of position, because obviously he gave him that he gave him that elbow to create that space. Stu, I think Stu was just letting him know he's not going for it. So as Giannis is going up for a dunk, Stu pulls Giannis by the jersey and, and, and throws him to the floor. Stu was not going to allow himself to get posterized. And because of that, he got ejected on a flagrant two. Stu's got to be a little bit smarter in that situation. I understand he doesn't want to give an inch. I understand the mental game that Stu is playing. I understand the respect that he's demanding. I just want to see him toe the line a little bit better. I need him to understand how important he is, especially in this type of game against this type of player. Right? I think in that moment, I think in that moment, he got a little bit too caught up in the one-on-one. -on -one. Because I'm sure that once he went to the locker room, and watched how the rest of that game played out. He saw how much he was missed. Because Giannis and the rest of the team. Just had a newfound confidence about themselves. As soon as Stu went to the locker room. It was literally like a door had opened. For the Bucks to walk right through. And I'm not saying that the Pistons didn't continue to play hard defensively. I'm just saying the difference was noticeable. It was blatant. You could just see how easily Giannis was able to get to the basket. Right, those those easy buckets in the second half, he was working for in the first half. Right, he was had either going to the free throw line or taking those middies or turning the ball over. Second half, he's finesse. You know, he's using the speed to get to the basket. He's doing the he's doing a euro step layup, just things that wouldn't be happening if Isaiah Stewart was in the game. So for everybody who had any doubt about the importance of Isaiah Stewart, you see the confidence and the physicality and the tone that he brings to this team. You could just sense it, and so could they. The second of three players we're going to talk about here is Malik Beasley. Malik Beasley returned to Milwaukee for the first time since not being re-signed by the Bucks this offseason. And you could see that he had a huge chip on his shoulder. Man, I, I feel so bad for him because this should have been a homecoming game that he won. He should have been able to get his get back and his revenge tonight in this game because he played a hell of a game tonight. He played very, very well. He was the second leading scorer. He was inserted into the starting lineup tonight because we were missing Jaden Ivey in the backcourt. And he played his butt off. He is one of the guys whose stats I'm going to mention. He had 26 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 turnovers on 9 for 17 shooting, 8 for 16 from 3. He played his heart out tonight, man. And he played with a chip, too. There was a play in the first quarter where A.J. Green was trying to guard him, and he just takes him to the rack and drops in a bucket and gives him the too small. Gives him the too small. You could just see he was ready to go get his get back. And they were well on their way in the first half. But he played amazing. I really just want to shout him out because Malik Beasley, man, he, he has continued to show why he's so important to this team. Even last game, not to backtrack too much, but last game, he made three critical plays that won the game. He had a three-pointer, followed by a screen to get Jalen Duran open for that alley-oop on Bam Adebayo, who's much bigger than Beasley, and the free throw to seal the game on the technical foul. Malik Beasley may be the most important offseason signing when you consider on and off the court. The things he brings on the court are obvious. He's a spacer. He's a veteran who's been there before. Right? We understand that. He can make plays as well. We understand that. But off the court, just the way he gives these guys confidence off the court, he takes every opportunity to get these guys confidence, whether it's, you know, shouting out our young stars on Instagram or social media, whether he is giving game balls to Kay Cunningham, all these different things is what he's bringing to the team. Those things weren't here last year. So to have a guy, a veteran like that, who off the court can... Make sure that confidence is never lacking in you as a star player. That's invaluable. So I feel really, really bad for him that we were not able to reward him because tonight's game ball should have went to him. We didn't get the win, but shout out to him for the impact he's made on both ends of the court. He played an amazing game. And if we're being honest, I'm sure he has surpassed all of our expectations as far as what we were expecting from him when he came here. The third guy I'm going to talk about is Kay. Kay had 35 points. Season high, 11 assists, two steals, three blocks, six turnovers, on 13 for 34 shooting, 
five for 10 from three, four for four from the free throw line. So this was a very polarizing game, I would say, when it comes to K's performance. He made a lot of good plays, made a lot of bad plays. One play in particular, he went up for a dunk on Brook Lopez. And before he took off for the dunk, I knew he was going to take off for it. And before Brook Lopez blocked it, I knew he was going to block it. I knew that fearlessness and K was going to try to throw it down anyway, even though the likelihood of it wasn't high. So decision making tonight from Cade in certain moments wasn't the best. But to his credit, he stayed with it. I said the same thing last night. We're, we're starting to learn more and more about players because we're starting to see some of the same things night after night. Right? Tonight in the loss. Last night was in the win. Last night against the Heat, Cade had some costly turnovers. Right? But he stayed with it. He stayed with it. And he was able to help us get out of win. Tonight, he had some turnovers. But he stayed with it. After he got blocked, he had two or three critical threes just to keep the Pistons in the game. He was playing his heart out. And he was doing whatever he could to help give his guys an edge. He got into the head of Andre Jackson Jr., young player for the Milwaukee Bucks. He was he was talking to him. He was nudging him. K was doing whatever he could to get an edge in this game to make sure that the Bucks were uncomfortable. So I know he had 35 tonight, right? That's a season high. He had 11 assists, which is good. He had a two to one assist to turnover ratio with 11 to six, three blocks, two steals, four out of four from the free throw line, five out of ten from three. So he didn't play bad. He just didn't shoot well overall. 13 for 34. That's about 30 percent. Right, a little over 30%. So that's a lot of shots. You know, he didn't shoot the greatest, but he played his heart out. He played his heart out. And it was hard for him tonight, too, because he didn't have his backcourt mate. He didn't have Jaden Ivey to take the pressure off of him sometimes. The majority of the offense was run through him. Right? So guys like Jaden Ivey, who was out tonight with his sprained toe, that really hurt the Pistons down the stretch. And, and K played 43 minutes, man. So he was probably gassed down the stretch. But he was trying to will his team to a win. So I'm not going to fault him for that. And the Pistons did not by any means lose this game because of him. So there's a lot we could talk about. I know Marcus Sasser hit the, the three-pointer that, that pretty much kept us in the game when we needed it with no shot clock left, which is crazy. Great shot by Sass. You know, he played solid, 11 points tonight. It was good to see that. Goodness, hopefully that can help him get catch a rhythm. A lot of things we can talk about tonight, but those are the three main things that I really wanted to get to tonight. And the biggest thing for me is the ejection of Isaiah Stewart. If that doesn't happen, the Pistons don't lose this game. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. A lot of other things happened as a domino effect as a result of that. But at the end of the day, the tone that was set completely changed in the second half. And you could just see that the Bucks just had confidence that they could win this game because they felt their best player was not going to be guarded by the player that guards him best. Another thing quickly, Ron Holland started tonight, right? He played well. I know he missed the two free throws at the end, but I'm not going to blame the young fellow for that. Very big moment, his first time in that situation, first time starting on the road. That's a tough situation, so I'm not going to hold that against him. Of course, I would have loved him to make one of those free throws because that would have ended the game, essentially. I'm not going to blame this on him. Every player has that moment as a rookie, as a player, right? Kobe Bryant, for example, he missed three straight threes against the Utah Jazz, back to back to back, air balls. So I'm not going to kill Ron Holland because he missed two free throws in a late game situation. So we're not going to kill him for that. Ron Holland has shown to be a very, very good rookie up to this point. And he's continued that tonight. He had 11 points, 4 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 steal on 5 and 10 shooting. So not to get too deep into the box, but Ron Holland is not the reason we lost this game tonight. So what did you guys see that I missed? Y'all know the drill, man. Let me know down in the comments and let's talk about it. Next up for the Pistons is the Raptors on Friday. And I expect the Pistons to bounce back in a major way and get that win. So as always, I appreciate you hanging with your boy. And until next time, Detroit. First, everybody. Peace. I'm gonna get some sleep. I'm on my way up and I'm not gonna stop. We headed straight to the top in the low. I gotta face it. I got no time to waste it.